we acknowledge the first Australians as the traditional custodians of the continent, whose culture is the oldest living culture in human history. We pay our respects to elders, past, present and emerging, and we respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. They share the memories, traditions and hopes of the traditional ancestors with the new generation today and in the future. We would also like to thank them for looking after this land for thousands of years. Hi everyone and welcome to Book Week. We are so excited to be here with you today. Uh, we are coming live from Technology for Learning in conjunction with Dart Learning. And today our session is all about connecting with country through creativity and storytelling. It's a really big title, but we're going to be really happy to show you and explain some of these ideas to you. And we're gonna go exploring today and having a big think about country. My name is Yvette Pashoglian. I'm an English teacher, I work with the T4L team, and I'm also a writer, I love to write. You might know some of my books like the Ella and Olivia series. And with me today is my friend and my colleague, Amy Phillips from the Technology for Learning team. Welcome, Amy. Thanks, Yvette, thanks for inviting me along and thanks for inviting me into your classroom, everyone, today. I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit about connecting to country and hopefully helping you along with your digital acknowledgement of country that you might look at creating with your teacher or your peers. My name is Amy and I've been working with the T4L team for four years now, but I've been a primary teacher and I'm currently the relieving principal education officer. So I've been working with lots of different schools across the state. So very excited to be here talking with you all. Now you would have just watched a digital acknowledgement of country that we've played. And that's something really special that we're really excited about helping schools along with. But today we're standing here on Gadigal land and it's the part of the Eora nation here in Sydney. It's a really special place. It's always been a very special place for me mm -hmm. Yvette, because mm -hmm. back when I started training to be a teacher, I used to get off the train and walk down the station all the way to Sydney Uni. So I've been part of this land for a very long time. Mm. And it is a really special place, just probably like the place that you're sitting in where your school is. And that's what we want to talk to you about today. So I'd like to acknowledge and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging here on Gadigal land. Do you know much about Gadigal land, Yvette? I, I do in the same way I also did my studies here and now I work here and we've been really lucky to watch it change over the years. It's it's a changing place. It's the suburb of Redfern predominantly. Um, it's been on TV shows. Uh, it's been in lots of books, lots of politicians have spoken about it and even watching it change over the years the buildings have changed and we were just saying Amy imagine what it was like in the beginning when the First Nations people were here and now look at where it, where it is today even today one of the main features of, of Everly where we are is a huge rail yard so it has been a site of industry as well but I think even just being here and talking about the country we're standing on today has opened up a pretty good conversation about what it means to each of us. Um, it means different things to both of us, but I, that's the mindset you need to get in for this session. Start having a think about the country that your school is on, what it looks like, who are the custodians of the land you're on today, and how could you maybe create a digital acknowledgement for your school, a little bit like the one we saw at the beginning of the workshop. That's what we're going to create today. But there's a lot of stuff to do before you get to that end result of creating an acknowledgement. A lot of it is about talking to people, Amy, isn't it? And understanding the connection that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have to country. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. I. Remember when I was at school, I don't think acknowledgement of country was something that we did often. Mm -hmm. I think schools do a tremendous job at doing it at the moment. Mm. So it was only when I grew up and I became a teacher myself that I found out more about it, talking and connecting with other Aboriginal teachers I worked with. But I'll take you right back to who I am. I'm a Wangaban woman. So my family come from just outside of Ningen. And even growing up then, an acknowledgement of country wasn't something we did together as a family or we talked about in our family. But I know that as times have changed, acknowledgements and welcome of country when you are connecting in a place or visiting other people or talking with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, that it's a really important thing to think about and reflect on. And I think for myself, 
when I was growing up, I had a really beautiful Aboriginal teacher in my primary school that taught us a lot about our culture and our history. And that made me think and reflect upon that a lot. And I try and make sure I instill that in the people I work with and the people I connect with, but also the students that I teach and I get to visit in and around the schools that we work with. So I think the first thing for me is a grounding piece. I really like to understand where I am and I often think, feel, hear, listen. So sometimes it's getting outside and walking on the ground and breathing in the air and being mm -hmm. in a special place that I start to really understand where I am, what it means to the people that are living on that land or have been living on that land for a very long time. And that may be something that students can firstly do is get outside and think and feel and be in the place. Because often you're probably just thinking it's your school or it's where I live, but there is so much history in and around that place that you might not have had mm. ability to um, understand and unpack yet. That's it. And you know what I was thinking of instantly was that book, My Place, oh. and how much I love that story by Nadia Wheatley and Donna Rawlins. And I, I think, you know, maybe that's a book to go back to and look at in your library, but there are some other wonderful picture books as well that are about country and acknowledging country. Something that we're going to be using today is this magazine, T for Learning Kids, T for All Kids, and it's our edition all about connecting with community. Now it is free, we're gonna have the link up on screen for teachers, and lots of the things, many of the things we're talking about today can be found in here. In fact, Amy has also lent her expertise to this magazine, and she's shared here just, just a little bit of what you said before, Amy, about what acknowledgement means to you. And for me, as a non-Aboriginal person, it's also a, a learn, a discovery journey for me as well to understand how Aboriginal people connect to the land, but also to understand what country means to all of us. And we, we, what we're gonna do is we're going to look at creating a word bank for how we feel, uh, connecting uh, those words together, maybe to form a script or a story or a poem for your school. Um, it's not something that we want you to go and do on your own though. It's all about sharing those words and emotions. And Amy and I created this together and we worked together and we talked to other, other people about what country means to them. One of our other guides in this magazine is our friend Curly Saunders, who is an author, a teacher, a playwright, and an all round legend who helped us put this magazine together. And she is your guide through this process. And we're going to have a listen to something really lovely that she's put together in just a moment. So. We don't want you to race around and get your computers out. All you need for this session is a pen and paper and to put your, your, your thinking cap on, your listening ears on and get creative because we're going to get in the zone of writing. In the magazine, you'll see there's lots of ideas, including templates for creating an acknowledgement of country. But I think it's really important for us to listen to each other. And Amy, even hearing you talk about what an acknowledgement means to, to you and your family, when you're home on country, would you give a welcome to country? Yeah, I would. So there is a difference and a lot of people don't know that. So a welcome to country can only be done by the traditional owners and custodians of that land. So when I'm on country with my family and, you know, sitting around mm -hmm. and having a barbecue or something like that, that's when I can connect really to that special place that mm -hmm. we've always cherished. So I always think about yabbying in the in the river and going out with my grandpa and you know going mm -hmm. fishing and doing all those sorts of things mm -hmm. and that's what makes me really reflect on that welcome and then I can welcome other people that come to that land um, and visit us there that's it. but an acknowledgement of country can be done by anyone and I think that's really important Yvette that Aboriginal people don't feel like they have to be the ones to do the acknowledgement all the time it can be by you your teacher your principal your classmates, but it's acknowledging those traditional people on the land and paying our respects to elders past, present and emerging and really having that connection sense to how they think, how they feel and how they represent themselves on that land as well. Exactly. And, you know, I bet there's somebody in your classroom for you watching in the classroom, in your class or maybe a teacher at your school who you can go and ask questions of who might be an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander person who could share their thoughts. Maybe they can help you get started with this project. So that's where we're going with today's session. And you know, Amy, I was thinking, you know how you said before that we didn't always do them at school. We didn't always do them in the community. I can count three times I heard an acknowledgement of country on the weekend. The first one was I was lucky enough to fly back into Sydney from Lutruwita, Tasmania, and they did an acknowledgement of country when they landed on the plane and welcomed us to Gadigal land in Sydney. I, I heard one last night in the supermarket 
I have never heard one there before. And it was acknowledging the traditional owners of the Gringai land because I shop on Gringai land. And I thought that was really interesting. I haven't heard one there before. And also so many sporting events, which we love sport, we're starting to see them more and more. And it always makes me feel really, it gives me a lot of emotions, I have to say, especially when it's delivered by an auntie or an uncle. And they're some of the terms as well that we use, aren't they, when we talk about elders and how we can show respect. Yeah, and it is connecting with those aunties and uncles and those Aboriginal people that have been a part of that land for a very long time. They connect, they can tell you stories. And this is what you need to start thinking about when you're thinking about writing your acknowledgement of country is, going and having those conversations and connecting and listening to those stories because a lot of our Aboriginal people have moved around just like myself. I didn't really have that experience of growing up on country. Mm -hmm. So even to go back and just listen, take it all in and then think and reflect on how it makes me feel is really important. Speaking yeah. about uh, acknowledgement of country, I heard one on a TV show last night on The Masked Singer. So I noticed really? that it is definitely becoming yep. something that I think our generation of students, you in the classroom, are really starting to take mm. very seriously and make sure that we are doing this appropriately and respectfully. That's it. And so the digital acknowledgement that you're going to create from watching this session is something that you could play at an assembly. It's something that you might add to a presentation when you're welcoming guests into your school. How great would it be able to show a snapshot of your country? It could include photos, it could include the words. Right now though, we're gonna take a listen to our friend Curly Saunders who created a digital a, a poetic digital acknowledgement of country and Curly's um, poetry is really beautiful. So what we want to do is we're going to show you there is a link in here, but we're going to get you to close your eyes, have a think. It makes me feel a lot of deep thoughts. It goes for about one minute and 20 seconds for those teachers. And once you've had a listen to that, we're you're going to come back and get started with our next session. I honour the traditional owners of these lands, shaped by sacred creation spirits, and pay my respect to their deep knowing, passed down through cell and story. I honour their culture and care for country, water and skies. I honour their survival for millennia, despite it all. I acknowledge my role in truth-telling, in caring for Mother Earth, for alpine mauve bird daisy, sawfish in salted estuary, for bellbirds curlew and gouldian finch, corroboree frog, antarctic beech trees, pygmy possum, atlas moth, spotted quoll, glossy black cockatoo, blue whale and coral. I acknowledge my role in protecting her remaining wild places, the forest, River, reef, desert, scrub, marshland, mountain, and great blue above. With the same loving kindness that the old people have always shown her. And like the wise ones, I promise to move everywhere with care. Oh, Yvette, how does that make you feel listening to that piece? Really? It's really powerful, isn't it, listening to that? Sometimes words, when they're spoken out loud, have an, a different meaning as well. Maybe that's something that the students can do, the writers can do while they're creating their acknowledgement. Can you write it down, read it out, see if it has an impact? Because hearing it from Curly was very powerful. Oh, it is absolutely mm. so beautiful to listen to someone mm. who is so proud about speaking about where they come from and what it means to them. I love listening. It gave me goosebumps yep. listening. Such a beautiful piece. Yep. But let's help everyone get started on their own piece. We're going to start you off with thinking a little bit about where you live. And maybe you haven't thought about that too much because you're probably just in your daily routine, packing your bag, walking to school and getting into your classroom, unsettling. But there's so much happening on the land that you come from. And there's so much history on that land that you are in now. That's it. So have a think about that. Maybe one of the first things you need to do is find out what country you are on. I bet your teacher knows. I bet your classmates know. Your principal definitely knows. There are so many good people to talk to in your community as well. So this is going to start a conversation. But I think, as with all writers, sometimes putting down ideas first is really good. And I think thinking about country, for me, I started to think as well, I'm on 
I'm on Gadigal land today here at work, but I live on Garingai land, which is in the northern beaches of Sydney. It's Manly. Some of you might know Manly. You might have been on the ferry. You might have seen a picture of it. So there's a lot of water. There's a lot of bush. And yes, of course, there's homes and shops and schools. But when I think about Garingai country, I think of the salty sea air because I'm often walking my dog along the edge of the water. And for me, it's a place that I love to be because I love the water. So I'm starting to think, Amy, about the words, sounds, feelings that I have living in Manly on Garingai country. And also back to maybe the First Nations people that lived there, there's a particular place I'm gonna tell you a little bit, bit about that has a really strong First Nations presence for me uh, on the land. What about you? Where do you live, Amy? I live out in Durrell country. So when I say out, it's because it's a little bit further away from here, which is based in MacArthur area. It stretches all the way down to the beautiful Wollongong. And I've been really lucky because I have basically lived and worked in that area on Durrell country for a very long time since I was a kid. I've been able to teach kids in Durrell country and I've been able to connect with different schools there. But I think the same as you, Yvette, I think really carefully about the first people that lived there and what it was like. And we're very lucky that we have obviously great facilities out there, but some really beautiful national parks, some really nice peaceful walks, bush walks, connecting with a lot of the uh, water area and things like that. Not salty, but nice and fresh. <laughs> I think I do a nice walk down backwards uh, through Kentland, which is basically part of the MacArthur area. It's a really beautiful piece of the country that has really nice nature strips, really nice native animals around, bird sounds. But basically you can go in there, you can be lost pretty much the whole day, but you can just hear that trickling water coming through. Mm. You can hear those bird sounds. It's a big climb mm. back up, but it's a gorgeous part of the, the, the area that we love to go and visit. And uh, we don't take our dogs in there because we like to make sure that it's part of that nature and natural part of the land that we don't want to disturb. Yeah. Um, but I know a lot of families go down there, have really nice picnics and share that space. Mm, beautiful part of the world. Having taught in Campbelltown, I know it well. I know some of the places I saw. I'm getting a sense of what it looks and sounds and, and, and smells like too, Amy. Um, what we're going to do now, and this is where you're going to need your pen and paper, uh, or somebody who might be might even be your teacher collecting some ideas on the board. And we're going to show you just something that we've prepared that is going to help us build a word bank for our digital acknowledgement, to work towards building a script for our acknowledgement of country, or maybe as a starting point for a story or a poem. And sometimes when I sit down to write my books, I have a collection of ideas. And the more that I write down, uh, I find it actually helps me get into the sense of place. Sometimes if I'm creating a fictional work, I have my characters, it helps me understand where they are, how they see the world, and also what they're going to do in that place. So just think as well, as well as an acknowledgement, this might be the beginning of a creative story for you as well. Um, look, I'm always talking about story storytelling because it's one of my favorite things to do. But what we're going to do is get started on this. Now, what we're using today is a main learning display. You might have one in your school. You might have something similar. It's a really good idea to try it on here because you can show your, your cl classmates what you're working on. You and your teachers might have some ideas. Plus, you can see everything straight away. It's great. What I've got here is a template. Everything here didn't take me that long to make. I found a photo book story template. Um, where we're going to upload photos on and then we're going to build a word bank and we're just going to chat about what images mean and sometimes when I look at a photo it really takes me somewhere so what I've got here I've uploaded a few photos might be a bit of too much information but you're going to see a little bit of where I like to walk my dog every day in fact you might even see my dog um, and what we're going to start off with is putting some photos together I chose blue because blue is near the water it's also a calming feeling so I just thought it was a good thing. And then I put a, a little image of a, a plant because I walk in the bush as well. And yeah, it just, it, I thought it was right for this. So you might be thinking as well about colors and ideas and maybe words that might help. I was going to say that it's a great place to start with colors and visuals and things like that. And that 
often helps us think a little bit deeper about those emotive words that might help us in our acknowledgement of country. So maybe going for a walk with your teacher Mm. or even just out in the playground and feeling the air, what it feels like to be on country is really a great start. But what sort of program are you using to put this together? Because you said it's really easy. Okay, sorry, I, I dropped the lead. It is Canva. Your teacher can set this up. We've got information on how teachers can get set up with a class for Canva in this magazine. As we said before, everything is in the magazine. And all it is, is you'll need to have your photos that you can send to your computer. And then I've uploaded it. Everything here happens on the left. Our little tool and toolbar is on the left. And everything we're working on happens here. And because it's we're using a main learning display, everything, I'm going to use my fingers today, but if we're going to do some writing, we might use the keyboard just because it's easier. So I've put a photo up here, and this is a place not too far from my house. It takes about 10 minutes to walk there. And when you get down there, this is called North Harbour Reserve. And Amy, it's got... Um, oyster beds that sometimes you can see when the tide is really low. Um, You can't really walk on them because they're a bit rocky, Um, but you can see there's a pathway and there's a boathouse here and all these lovely boats. But when you get past this area, it actually flows out into Sydney Harbour. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that. And the walking bush track is along here. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how that feels to walk down that bush track. Now, with photos, I don't know about you, Amy, but I do like filters. Yes. Filters can help us with moods. And just like uh, on our phones or other devices, we've also got an ability to edit our images in Canva. So I'm going to press Edit Image. And down here, you can see there's a whole group of tools that will help you. Look, you can make it look a bit apocalyptic. I don't want to live on Mars, so I'm not going to put a red filter on it. But you can really play around with how you want it to look. And there are lots of different features on there. You can make it pixelated in case you wanted it to look a little bit different. Here, there's lots of different lenses. This one's called Marmalade. I've put that on, I think I'm gonna go with that because it looks natural, except it's given maybe a little bit enhanced the blue. So it's really gonna take you there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it into my little photo that's set up there. I didn't make this, I found the template on Canva. It was already ready to go. I changed the color palette because I wanted it to be blue. Okay, let's get moving because I've got some photos to add. Here, as promised, is my dog, Archie. He's He just works his way into every presentation, you oh, know. I've noticed. <laughs> I know you have dogs too, <laughs> but uh, Archie just likes to be famous. Uh, maybe you have an animal at your school a therapy animal, maybe there's a community, maybe there's a brush turkey that hangs out at your school. There's heaps of them near where I live. Maybe you need a photo of them to capture them. So here's Archie, it was very windy. You can see his ears flicking up. I'm going to put another filter on this and I'm gonna make it maybe, let's make it festive. You can see it's made it, made my hat browner, my ears dog, dog's ears grayer and the water is really nice and blue. And I'm gonna put it into this one here. Now, one of the other things that I see on my walk are lots of boats and people leave them by the side of the water to row out to their yachts because it's that kind of a place. But when you're not using them, you leave kayaks left behind and they're all on the shoreline. And just behind here is the walking track that you get down to. And Amy, I love the bush Mm. because you've got the bush right on the water here and there's a fat, there's whip birds that live up here. And if you know the sound of a whip bird, it's really special and The road is not far away, but for me, it's like being in the bush in the middle of the city. So for me, that's why I love it. I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna put another filter on it. In fact, and Yvette, have you lived on Gurungai land your whole life? No, I haven't. Okay. I moved there a few years ago and part of what I did as a writer was I wanted to learn about the country I was writing mm. on. And so I've gotten to know my local Aboriginal uh, land council and education group mm. as well. And that might be a place people can start if they want to find out a little bit more about their elders. And I think I've um, doubled up on that one. And a lot of sometimes your local council websites or even a couple of the resources we've put in the magazine can help you connect to the country that you might be on and learn a little bit about the land. And just like Yvette does, goes out for a walk on the weekend with her dog to discover a little bit more. But 
connecting to people and connecting to groups like your local AECG or your local land council to find out more is really helpful and in, in terms of getting you started in this journey. But it looked like it was a really beautiful day. It was. It was a beautiful sunset as well. And you can see here, this is North Head and South Head. And that's, the, that's how you actually come into Sydney Harbour. And, you know, sometimes for me, when I go to one particular part of Balgala Fairlight, there is a beach called 40 Baskets Beach. And even though it was a place where 40 baskets of fish were once caught, near the, for, the, for the quarantine station, there were people stationed there. It was actually a very sacred Aboriginal place and there is a, remains of a big shell midden on the beach. And I'm currently exploring the story and the history of that area because there's not many Aboriginal people left in that area. So I think exploring the past is a way for us to maybe have a dialogue about the future as well. And it helps me understand where I'm living today. I think a lot of authors do that. Like mm. Jackie French is an author yes. that I think of when I think about yes. past and telling stories and connecting with mm. what has happened because I think you're very lucky that you get to kind of go and see these beautiful mm. places and, you know, just stand there and close your eyes and vision what this might have been like yep. 20 years ago, but 200 years ago is such a different story to tell. That's it. And 2,000 years ago, Amy, um, it really is a way for us to sort of examine our our, our history and also understand stories and what stories and language means to Aboriginal people. And I think we started off our chat by thinking about where country is for our, our viewers, but maybe there are, it's, it's a good conversation to have about different Aboriginal languages as well. Do you speak language or are there words that you know from your language in your country? Um, where's a good place for people to start if we're going to think about looking for words that's a, a great a, a great um call out of it it's a it's really interesting around aboriginal languages there are not many people that speak aboriginal mm. languages here in sydney you need to really go and look for them mm -hmm. um and talk to them about that um and once i heard a statistic that you know uh, 200 2000 years ago there were over 250 aboriginal languages here in australia mm. and they've slowly started to um die out with elders who have passed away mm -hmm. um, and that language is lost yeah. and that often makes me feel really sad yeah. because I think when you've lost part of that culture it's you know something that we can't ever get back so documenting it through things like technology is really important so creating things like this where you're capturing but also using things like podcasts and recording to yes. learn a bit about language I am not lucky enough to know much language but I do try really hard to acknowledge where I live and if I visit a particular place and understand some welcomes and things and I've learned a couple of different pieces of languages of where I've taught so that I can make sure that I can uh, speak part of that language but it is something mm -hmm. that I think you know it would be great for students in schools yes. to start thinking about those traditional languages and embedding them and learning a little bit about them as well. That's that's great Amy. Um, we do have in the magazine a map of Indigenous languages that people can have a look at that resource and find out and you know what's actually really handy on that website you you can play uh, the sounds and hear how the words is, are pronounced and I think that could be something that could start a conversation in your community with your elders um, or maybe your classmates might know some words that you can add to your word bank. So what we're going to do next is have a look at building a word bank and remember I said I live on Garingai country so I just created a little word bank and Amy I think we should talk a little bit about how our place that we lived in live, live in make us feel. And I've started the word car with the word calm because being by the water makes me feel calm. After a busy day, I take my dog down to the water and I actually forget about all the things that are on my mind and it makes me feel really close to nature. So um, are there any other words that you can think of, Amy, that could be applied to Garingai or your country that makes you feel, I might get you to man the keyboard. Of course. Um, any other words we can think of? I was going to say... Um, I like peaceful. Peaceful. Because I, I kind of feel like when I'm even looking at the beautiful part of the country that you live in, we live in yes. very different parts yes. of Sydney, but we both have that theme where it's very nature based. Mm -hmm. It's a place where you go to, I guess, calm down mm -hmm. and be nice and peaceful, probably after a busy mm -hmm. day of learning or, mm -hmm. or teaching. It's something that you can center yourself yes. and just take a yes. walk, deep yep. breathe and connect to the place that you're in. Mm. Peaceful, perfect. I'm going to think about some of the sounds I hear on my walk. Mm. Um, what about waves lapping? Oh, waves lapping at the edge. It could be the sand. Sometimes it's the waves lapping on the rocks. Sometimes I think about the colours. You could see there were the browns of the rock. There's the greens of the trees. So you could even put some colours down. 
browns, greens, blues. Maybe think about some different words for those colours. Um, I'm thinking. I'm going to put crystal because oh, when I yes. look at your water, it yes. just looks crystal and blue, like it's, almost that amethysty mm -hmm. kind of feel. And Ooh, oh, it's gorgeous. Yes. I love that. I was thinking about some of the things I hear as well, like animal wise. I hear whip birds. And if you don't know what that sounds like, I'm not going to replicate it, but you can certainly Google it and hear a whip bird. And what it is, it's actually two birds. Sounds like one, one bird is making the sound, but it's actually one bird calling to another. So maybe the sound, we could put the dance of the whip birds. For me, I like to imagine them up in the trees, watching over the bushwalkers, walking along the bush track and think about how long they've been here as well. This is their land and we're just happening to walk through it. So I've got the sound of the whip birds, we've, whip birds, we've got, um, what about, um, what about the way sand feels underneath your feet? Mm, that gritty yes. kind of feeling. Yeah, the gritty grains of sand. There we go. There's some alliteration. Gritty grains. So that's just the very beginning of our word bank for one particular place. Thanks, Amy, for helping me out with that because, you know, that's not your place, but you can, you know, there's probably a lot of similarities between our countries. And I think it's probably a good place for everyone to get started now with having a list of words and we're going to start exploring how to pull those words together into an acknowledgement or into maybe something else that's a little bit more creative and we're going to hear from our, our friend Curly Saunders in just a minute as well. Wow, Yvette, I have so many words just floating around in my head after that activity. You've been thinking about Guy land, I'm thinking about Darwal country, I'm thinking about Wongabon land where I come from. So many different places and things I'm drawing on, experiences, timelines, stories my family have told me, stories students have told me when I've gone into schools. So I'm trying to piece it all together now and I'm thinking about how we can help everyone at home, at school, work on their digital acknowledgement mm -hmm. of country. So. Tell us a little bit about the resource that we're showing. Sure. Luckily, we prepared something earlier for the Mamie. Uh, I'm not going to lie. This is a real go-to place. And as somebody who, look, we're writers, we know that we've got a lot of budding writers here. This is a great hub for you to come to. Again, it's in the magazine. And it's a program called Everyone's an Author. And what we did is we got to meet 10 of our favourite authors. Um, we've got Jackie French, who you mentioned before, we love Jackie's historical stories. We've got people like Matt Stanton. You might have seen Matt's presentation for Book Week as well. We've got uh, Matt Cosgrove, Mac of the Alpaca. We've got me. I put myself in the program because I'm just that kind of person. So what we're going to look at is actually our friend Curly Saunders' video. Now, Curly's video sits on here. So everyone's done a little video for us. It's on the Technology for Learning website. It's completely free. Nothing sits behind the firewall. You might have friends at other schools that want to take a look. You can send a link to them. There are 10 short videos that are about three minutes each with an author talking through an aspect of writing. And we're lucky we got to speak to Curly about place and poetry. And you can see down here, hers is here. Now, you might have read her books. Um, she's just written a book called Bindi, which I found really powerful because it's about a connection to a bushfire ravaged country and it was quite sad but I also found it quite beautiful as a way for me to understand black summer and bushfires and how that impacts our landscape. You might know her book, a picture book, The Incredible Freedom Machines, where she talks about how books and ideas can take us to different places. So we're really lucky to be in Curly's hands. We're going to watch this video from Curly exploring what place means to her and how it informs her writing. So sit back and have a watch. Hi everyone, my name is Curly Saunders and it's such a pleasure to be joining you today for Everyone's an Author. Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge country. So, Nya Curly Saunders acknowledge Mirini, Gananugang, Darawo, Madungburin, Giling, Yangu, Didgerigura, Nyeini, Ganai, Yuen, Ganagara, Gadikul, Birapai, Burin, Giling, Fra, Ayo, Wangdui. So, I acknowledge my ancestors and I also pay my respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging of the Darawo Nation. This acknowledgement today is particularly pertinent because we're going to be talking a lot about country and a lot about the landscape that knows and remembers us. When I'm writing books, and maybe you know some of my books, The Incredible Freedom Machines or Kindred or my newest book, Bindi, 
I really love to pay attention to the setting and the landscape that is an integral character in our stories. Before we start today, I really want you to have a think about the landscape or setting for your own stories. I want you to imagine what that place looks like, how it feels, what the temperature of that space is, if it feels cozy and welcoming, or if it's a place that's rugged and uncomfortable. And I want you to begin to paint the picture of that space with your words. You'll begin to write down some of these ideas using this technique imagery, the painting of picture with your words, and drawing in that really descriptive terminology to really welcome your audience into exactly the setting that you're placing your story around. So that would be my tip number one, using imagery to write a description for your beautiful setting, that additional character in your story. Another technique that I really like to use when I'm writing is personification. I love to personify the setting in my story. So using personification, we give something a human quality, perhaps a place or a thing or an idea. I know when I move across some of my favourite places on country, maybe out near the ocean, sometimes the ocean is rugged and wild and the horizon melds into the sea. But the ocean there speaks gently to me and it pulls me in certain directions and it shows me the right places to go, guides me. Or if I think about my favourite waterfall that I love to go and sit at, the earth there speaks calmly to me and makes me feel welcomed and helps me remember myself. So perhaps you can begin to explore in your own writing the way that you might personify your own landscape as a wise and knowing space that guides your characters on their journey. I hope these tips help everyone and I can't wait to read your stories. Good luck in this journey and remember, everyone's an author. Bye. Wow, that even seeing some of those landscapes in that video, oh, again, I just have so many words in my head and the great thing about helping students in New South Wales schools is everyone's country is so different. There are so many different landscapes. So it's really important that we personalize those acknowledgements, isn't it? Absolutely. Not just obviously to recognize the traditional custodians on the land where you are and connecting to that place, but for our students that live in those coastal settings, mm. they're very connected to sea water, the experiences they have there is so different to going out in the far west where all you can see is red dirt and that beautiful blazing sun and things like that. Mm. So it's really important to think about how you can connect to the country and the place that you're in and really give us that imagery of that mm. beautiful spot that you're sitting in right now. One thing that I loved Curly talking about was the idea that the landscape is alive and that it's a living thing. And that idea, that technique of personification, we're going to personify the land that we're on and that it's not quite a human, it's not quite an animal, it, that it's alive in some way and how we feel about that landscape and how it feels about us. That made me really think differently about, you know, the landscapes we walk through. So all of these ideas are going to be things that you take towards creating your story, poem, script, acknowledgement. And luckily we've got something as well that we created in line and Amy and I worked on this and we've, it was a big part of our lives and we're really excited to be able to show it to you today. And what it is, is a learning journal where you can start to work maybe as a class and put your ideas down directly on a device. You might use it on an iPad, you might use it on a Chromebook, um, you might share it on the screen and work off it. So we've got it available under our video. We've got it as a, a pages journal for Apple users. We've got it as a, a PDF for everybody as well to take a look at. And Amy, we had a lot of fun playing with some of the elements of this. And we're gonna show you a little bit about how this could help you. So it's called Poetry in Place and it ties in with Curly's video. And what we've got here and this, we've got them for all of the authors that we spoke to, but we've got a little bit of information about Curly, her biography. That could be a good start too, especially if you're talking to an elder in your community to write down their name. They could be auntie or uncle, 
um, and you could maybe document a little bit about their story. Is that something that you could do when you're talking to an elder? Are you allowed to record their voices or is that something you need to find out about? I think you definitely need to go and talk and connect to those people first. Traditionally with Aboriginal people, sometimes they can be a little bit nervous to come on camera or to have their voices recorded. So it's always a great idea to talk with your teacher, talk with your principal who might be able to connect you with some elders in the community and then start engaging mm. them, bringing them into the school and having a talk about, with them about what you're here to do and what you would like to find out more about and then asking their permission, of course, if you're going to record their voice. That's right. And that is something we definitely asked Curly about when we were putting this together. We got her, um, her confirmation that she was so fine to share this with us. But it is just something that many of us do when we're putting together stories anyway. And particularly if we're recording and interviewing someone, always good to ask. We'll use quotes uh, in quotation marks if we're using something that they've said. So we've got here, we used it on an Apple device, so on an iPad. And we've got some links out here to things that sort of can support you along the way. If you're using iPads at your school, there are a lot of links that click through to resources embedded in this document. And um, I'm, I'm an iPad user, so I'm a little bit biased, but there are lots of fun tools in here, but you can still explore it even if you don't have an iPad. So we've got a little bio here of Curly um, to help us understand her story. And maybe you could create a biography of your class. Who are you? Where do you all come from? Some of you might come from outside of Australia and have other stories to tell as well that could form part of your acknowledgement. You could acknowledge all the different countries and places that your school and your students come from. We've got a little meet the author section where she tells us a little bit about herself. She's got some good advice there for writers. Um, every time I listen to Curly, I wish I was a better poet, but the truth is I'm still working on being a poet, Amy. How's your poetry going? It's not too bad, but these sorts of resources really helped me because I can't just put words into beautiful sentences like you can. I think everyone <laughs> heard you that when you were describing what Guringai country, just that wording flows really beautifully. And so I loved your advice on, you know, those images. And I loved Curly's advice on, you know, treating the landscape as it was alive. I think that's mm. such a great way to think mm. about it. Help would help me definitely when I'm writing yeah. in poetry or using personification and things like that because I think like you said we've got a lot of budding writers who are very keen mm. to share stories but these little techniques and these little ways to do that is yes. great advice from our authors. Well look you did tell me and explain to me a little bit about Darawal country and I was transported so all of those word banks help. What we've broken them down to is lesson experiences. So here, you've actually already started with this one. And this first lesson experience is about writing what an acknowledgement means to you and your school and your school community and finding those words. You've already started that with your word bank. And from here on in, we're going to actually work towards creating that digital recording. Maybe you're gonna get your class nominate someone in your class maybe everyone's going to say something and record it as a podcast or record it on a microphone on your device and go from there if you're going to go out and interview an elder recording them and taking a microphone with with them to help build that picture maybe you could record some of those sounds in your area the bird song most definitely you know? i was even thinking when you were explaining where you were walking just envisioning and hearing the lapping of the ocean on the shore and the whip birds that you could hear not everyone's going to be able to picture those because they might be sounds they've never heard before. So recording them, putting them together on a podcast piece or using something like GarageBand to connect everything together can really build that experience and that connection to the place that you are telling us that you're from and connecting to. Yep. And you know what I was thinking as well? Some of my favorite podcasts have intro music and outro music and sound effects. They're things you can also make on Gar GarageBand, right? Absolutely. And it's the best thing about it is you're creating your own original work and putting it all together. I seen a really great class when I went out to a school out right in the far west that had an acknowledgement of country they built built into a QR code that you scanned when you basically walked into their classroom, which I That's thought was so amazing cool. because straight away I heard the voices of the students yep. and I heard the sounds of what they were used to out there, all the different tractors and noises that they're experiencing every day. It was a really set me into the place. And yeah. that's as an Aboriginal person myself is what I find really po powerful in connecting to a country is being in that place and experiencing and feeling. Maybe you've got a school orchestra or band that you could go in and record one morning uh, and get a little grab of their music. That could also be something you do. That's, that's fantastic, Amy. I love the QR code. Uh, we've got another experience here 
and we're going to start thinking about some of those techniques in poetry particularly with an image and this particular image we've got here is something that looks like the outback to me you were talking about being in far west new south wales and the colors sound very different out there i haven't been out there but it sounds like a, a very different place to some of the places we've talked about this morning. Yeah, it was very um, part, much part of the country that I had never been to either. Um, so seeing and feeling those really red earthy tones on my shoes and my feet and and thinking about how different it was to where I lived was something that I found really important to take in because it was literally a place where it was as far as I could see, there was just red. Wow. And it was such a powerful image in my head that I, I really felt very different in that place mm. to where I come from usually because yes. it's so different to think about, you know, a, a land that's pretty much untouched. Like it's such a beautiful part of the country. Here's a tricky question. Did it make you feel alone or did it make you feel connected or were you, were you with a group of people that were able to share that special place with you? Well, I was lucky enough to go into a couple of schools there. So I got to listen to some of the students who had grown up there, obviously, and basically hadn't been outside of that place where they lived and where they went to school, which was really special because it was generations of families that had lived there. So hearing about what they did, you know, on the weekend and and how they connected to that special place in the country and things like that was so different but such a powerful experience for me because not once did I feel alone I felt like I could connect really easy to somewhere very different than I'd mm. grown up in and how good would that be if you have a guest to your school that listens to your acknowledgement of country and feels that way the minute they step into your classroom or your school because that's what you really want to achieve here you want to bring your community together through words pictures and sounds so we've got uh, this shot of the outback. We're starting to listen to those sounds and think about the community and the spaces that we're in and thinking about poetry techniques like imagery, how imagery you can, you know, we started to talk about my bush track, but actually creating some more words around actually where your school is located. Um, you know, it might be next to a main road. You might want to include the honks of the cars that go past every day. That's your reality at your school if, you, if you're near a busy road. Um, you might um, you know, hear other sounds. You might hear the, the school band wafting over um, the school hall as you're entering. You know what's another really familiar sound? A footy, a footy match or handball courts. A bell. A bell. What song do you play at your school? Do you have songs between um, little lunch, recess, lunch, and end of, end of home time? Like, what's a sound? that makes you think about your place at school. These are all things that you could include in your acknowledgement. And Yvette, you've been talking a lot about the places that everyone's in. It's original sounds and original photographs and things mm. like that. And I know with Aboriginal people, we storytell, we paint, we dance, we share a lot of our culture through all of those mediums. And I know a lot of traditional Aboriginal people in your area or local people might be creating artworks yes. or doing their own songs and things. What do you think? Should I just, can we take some of those and pop them into our pieces? Well, you know, Amy, it's really, I'm really glad you asked that question because I had to learn what the right thing to do was when we were putting together the magazine. And I've got a printed edition of the magazine here and we were looking at it before and I, I wasn't really sure what to do because you can't just take things off the internet and put them in. What you have to do is find an artwork that you're allowed to use the artist has given their permission for you to use and if you're going to use it in your acknowledgement you have to you have to pay them respect and give them the credit that they deserve so in this case we used an image this beautiful image from a student from Bogabilla Central School her name is Susanna and she gave us permission to reproduce this artwork in lots of different ways you can see inside we actually have used different elements of the artwork and I love it because it's blues and greens and blacks and it's actually telling us a story of her community and what we did when we made the magazine we gave we gave her credit on the front page artwork is created by Susanna a student from Bogabilla Central School on Gamilaroi country it represents themes of community school friendship and family it's, it's not the right thing to do to just go to the internet and pick something up, but what if you spoke to a local artist that has a beautiful artwork that you could use? Maybe there's someone in your school that could create a, an Aboriginal artwork that you're able to use. Also, you could draw some of your own images. They wouldn't be Aboriginal artwork, of course, if you're not an Aboriginal person, but you could use photos. And that's why we were looking at those photos of place, because you definitely, if you take the photo, you own that photo. So think about, 
how you can acknowledge the creators. And, you know, this is one artwork we did find that we could use. There are some out there, so just have a look. I mean, it's about research too, isn't it, Amy? Such a good question, because I actually wasn't sure about that either. Yeah, I was thinking about that, because we're really headed in a direction where we really want our students, our everyone in their classrooms, to create something that is theirs. Yes. And how I feel and I think and I see is very different to what you would experience, but I want you to be a part of that as well and connect to me where I am. So that's something really important, mm. I think. Oh, but as great. we go through the experiences, we're coming up to the really tricky part, which I always have trouble with, which is that language piece. But there's <laughs> a really good uh, piece here that will help students unpack those language devices and the things that writers are really good at, <laughs> uh, but we're getting better at, of course. Exactly. Um, look, I was actually just going to show you that Curly gave us a very short poem and it's only got four stanzas and each stanza has one sentence. I'm just going to read it to you. It's called Wildflower. I picked these to remind you that there is a place for your struggles. These, the most precious of flowers, grow only from dust and dirt. There is so much in that, that, that poem and I reckon that's something that you could explore with your teacher because it's all about understanding the stories of struggle and understanding you know, how that might have seeped into the land we're in. So there's a lot of emotions, aren't there, Amy, that sometimes poetry brings up. Maybe that's what it's gonna, your acknowledgement's going to do as well. So that's how powerful words can be. We've also got some things here about um, using um, recordings to help your acknowledgement along. So we've really mapped it out for you. If you've forgotten almost everything that we've said, that's okay. It's all here, ready for you to take it and run with it. And we've got lots of other resources here at the bottom. Ideas on how to connect with your local elders. That's a really good starting place. This is available online. And if we go back to our um, magazine online, you can see here, we've got the Aboriginal languages map here. We've got um, an interactive language map as well from Gambe. We've got a template that the New South Wales Department of Education has created to help you get started. I think that's always a good start as well. Um, and if we just, I think that might actually be the last page. I don't know why he has stopped. We'll go in and out again. It's definitely a great resource to explore because there are so many ideas to help. And I think today there's lots of words, there's lots of imagery, there's lots of different ways that our students can piece together their acknowledgement of country. But I think it's about having those conversations and making sure that we're connecting, obviously, with our local Indigenous people that we might connect with through school, having conversations with our teachers who might have been teaching there for a long time and pulling apart, but now pulling it all together as well, I think. That's it. And you know, in the magazine, once I finally got there, there are a lot of different types of acknowledgements and we've included some awesome videos of schools that are doing things really in a, in a really interesting way. Some of it includes dance, some of it includes video recordings. So maybe you already have some things on file from a music night or a performance afternoon that you might have on file that you could use as well to incorporate into your acknowledgement. Some schools did it in Auslan, which is Australian Sign Language. I was actually blown away by that one as well, Amy. Um, so there are lots of different ideas here and how to actually maybe set it up online as well. That might be something you can do next. Maybe it sits on your school's homepage. Um, and here you can see we've got lots of different ideas for tech. We used Canva today, but you might like to use PowerPoint. You might like to use Google Slides. You can do an acknowledgement in lots of different formats, Amy. Do you have something that you prefer to work in or is it, you know, what's your go-to? If I'm creating, I love to weave and personalize myself with whom I'm presenting to. So I really sit down and I think about it. I'm a word person. I'm not a writer like you, bet, <laughs> but I, I love to connect the audience to myself and, and really orientate them to the day. So, you know, if the theme is around innovation, I'll talk a little bit about um, the area that I'm in and how Aboriginal people have been innovative, whether they were building fish traps or whether they were reading the landscapes to understand, you know, those hot, wet, dry seasons and yes. things like that. So, of course, Aboriginal people being our first innovators and, yes. and you know, utilising the land in a particular way, I really make sure that I connect to that place. So that's always a good way to start and think about 
what are we trying to say in our acknowledgement of country and then pulling into where you'd like to present it and like Yvette said there are heaps of really beautiful ways you can do that we use Canva like you said but I love using things like Keynote and I love using things that allow us to share visuals and sounds and things. So using GarageBand or something cl like Clips or something like that, that will help connect everything together and share it out. Because like we saw, there are so many ways that schools are sharing this and putting it on their website and putting it in their classrooms and things like that. And it's really sharing those cultural experiences that I think are so important. And our students are leading the way in this space. It is, and maybe Amy today, yes, the schools are going to create an acknowledgement of country and we have so many schools joining us today, so we're going to give you a big shout out as well in a minute. Thank you so much. Um, we've also got some other ideas for how you can use it in your school. And like we said, you might put it at the beginning of a concert where you have parents and, and teachers coming together. Maybe you get your teachers to play your acknowledgement at a staff meeting. Maybe you have um, debating teams coming in to visit you at your school. Why don't you show them an acknowledgement so you can welcome them to your school before you beat them in the debate um, you could have you could have it at a sports match that's happening in your school as well so there's lots of different yeah, ways yeah I'm seeing here and I love this idea because we've just helped Art Express and yes. they had a a, yes. a VR based gallery which was so special but having something that they can connect to online using something like co-spaces or Minecraft to mm. connect to that country piece is, is really cool such well, a great idea that's a great idea one of the things we did mention is you can actually get an, give an acknowledgement in Minecraft and we show you how to do that in a magazine I bet you haven't done that before it's time to get started all of these resources are, should be up on the screen and are available um, through your email that you got through your school, but um, everything should be on the screen for you to connect with us here. Amy, I have really enjoyed our chat today. I hope that this session inspires our students and our writers out there to maybe even go further with their acknowledgement and turn, you know, turn it into a poem, create a story, maybe create a picture book for their school. There's so many ideas out there. Yeah, even connecting and, and being able to, I guess, capture things that are happening at your school, like we've talked about today, language, mm. elders. It's a really special time for you to be able to then go and have a conversation with them. But mm. it's also being about that place and being able to capture that in a moment of time that, like I've said today, might not be here in 10 years' time or 20 years' time. Or if you yeah. go back to Ringai land in 20 years, you'll be able to That's then it. connect to that place again. That's it. And there are so many schools that have done it tough in the last couple of years, whether your school was affected by bushfires or perhaps flood this year, that could form part of the story that you're telling as well. So maybe it's a way to capture um, the feelings and the mood at your school and maybe it's a way to capture a story as well, starting from the very beginning from our first people. Amy, it has been a real pleasure to learn from you today and thank you so much for sharing your ideas and your wisdom with us. I got a lot out of it and I know that I'll be approaching my my acknowledgements in a more I suppose you know I think I feel like I have more confidence and it's um, it's something that I will aim to do in lots of facets of my life whether I'm presenting um, a, a, a talk at a school because sometimes I do go and do school talks or whether it's um, welcoming people into our workplace here on Gadigal land so thank you so much for sharing and plus I loved hearing a little bit about the lands you come from and the lands you live on Thanks, Ever. I think it's important that we started a conversation and that's where this all starts is talking, your teachers, students, people that live in your area and connecting to that place. So we hope you've started your journey in, in your acknowledgement of country and we hope that you've started to piece together some of those ideas. There's been lots, but having a conversation with your teacher and planning that out Hopefully you can connect in with us because we'd love to connect to where you are. Yes. So they can share back with us send, too, can't send they? Send us what you create. We would love to see it. Um, we'd love to give you a shout out further. But good luck and get creative, all you budding writers out there. Take care.